Hi there, it's Mortgage Wise with Mike Wise at CMG Home Loans and today we're going to be talking about the all-in-one uh, loan that we have. And uh, uh, it, this is a new product to me, but today we've got the expert here, Dave, and he's going to go over it in details. But before we do that, uh, let me give you a little bit of background and why I'm doing this. I've been in the mortgage business for about 30 years now and we've done, uh, I've done a lot of loans for uh, for people it's over two billion dollars worth of loans and uh, we've helped people get into houses refinance their houses lower their payments really reach their dream of home ownership and when I started at CMG home loans you know I figured out you know this is a good place to go but the president Chris George called me up and basically said you know you've got to learn about this all-in-one product and who would have thought that there's a different way a different loan program that I would love so much and uh, this all-in-one loan you know we, we've had the 30-year fixed for a hundred years now almost and um, it's been so helpful to a lot of people. It's extended the, the, the term of the loan to 30 years and basically lowered the payments and put people in a great position financially. But now with this all-in-one loan, it's a different way. And Chris basically said, you need to get in touch with Dave. And Dave is the guy. He's taught uh, everybody about this all-in-one loan. He's been doing it for the last 18 years. Uh, since the inception of the product and uh, so I got in touch with Dave everything that I've learned so far I've learned from Dave on the all-in-one product but now here he is today in person thanks for being here he is the senior vice president of the all-in-one uh, product and that's all he does he he lives and breathes the all-in-one loan every single day so thanks Dave for being here thank you Mike I appreciate you uh, you having me up here so I talked about the 30-year fixed rate just a, a little bit ago and uh, almost a hundred years since the 1930s uh, that loan has been in process. So Dave, tell me a little bit about 18 years ago when you're developing this product, mm -hmm. what was the problem that you were trying to solve? What was, why, was, why is this all-in-one loan different than or what was it that you were trying to solve? Sure, uh, it's it's a it's a great question. You know, ultimately, uh, really in the early 2000s, one of the things that uh, Chris George really noticed and, and that he still talks about today uh, was uh, a lack of innovation, a lack of sort of forward thinking, um, taking part in the in, in the industry. Um, I, I think honestly, the industry has focused nearly exclusively on on making access to credit really the focal point. Uh, of the industry, the primary objective. Uh, and along the way, I, I think that Chris feels that we've sort of lost um, sight uh, uh, with helping people uh, not just gain access to credit and, and create affordability you know, opportunities in housing, but also to help people get out from underneath the debt, um, uh, have an easier time doing that. And that, that became really the drive for Chris to, to begin to think differently about the way we, we pay for real estate. And out of uh, these ideas uh, uh, came a product that uh, we put forth with the brand name called the Home Ownership Accelerator, which is this, this product, the all-in-one loan. Uh, but we, we first introduced, uh, back in 2005, this product under that brand name. And, uh, you know, it was, it was really our belief then that, uh, you know, helping people pay off their homes earlier, uh, become mortgage-free sooner in their lives was a very, uh, has an impact, has a very meaningful impact for people. And uh, that was the primary, you know, goal. We went to market with that brand name and that, that message. Uh, and it resonated. Absolutely, but you know, we 18 years later, I can I can look back and say that we've certainly learned a lot of new things uh, as well about really about what this product can do for people uh, and how paying off a mortgage is sort of secondary uh, for a lot of people, and I can speak to that, of course. But that was our frame of uh, reference at the at the at that point in time, and. Um, and if you think back in 2005, where people were sort of leveraging their equity and taking on more debt, 
because it, the belief was, of course, that, that housing prices would continue to, to increase and everybody was safe. And, uh, you know, we, we were putting to market a, a, a loan program that helped people deleverage that debt uh, more rapidly. So it helped people actually, not just during that time, but also during the financial crisis of 2008, have an easier time navigating through that, that turmoil. Uh, so, you know, we, but we've learned a lot since and, and uh, ended up rebranding the product, which is much easier to spell <laughs> and remember. And uh, I think it's much more reflective of its origins, um, you know, and, and how it's structured. All right. So you've, so Home Accelerator Loan has now changed to the all-in-one loan. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start from a, like a 10,000 foot level here and, and then we'll get into some of the details a little bit later. But tell me, from, from a 10,000 foot level, what is the all-in-one loan? Yeah, the, the all-in-one loan is, in concept, it's the merging of personal banking and home financing wrapped up into one fluid financial tool uh, that comes in the form of a mortgage. So let me repeat that. Personal banking, meaning uh, just a personal checking account, merged with a mortgage security that's used obviously to, to finance real estate, whether that's a purchase or a refinance, whether that's placed on a primary residence, a second home, or an investment property. Um, it's the merging or the combination of ca cash flow management or uh, income management uh, in and out of a mortgage. Um, and the, the idea behind this is to use money more effectively, uh, sort of wash money in and out of uh, what is otherwise the largest debt people generally commit to in their, in their yeah. lifetime to help shrink the size and the cost of that debt. You know, when you, most Americans need to borrow money in order to participate and own real estate, and borrowing money comes at a cost. Um, and you know, traditionally we have to rely on interest rates to, to create affordability and, and savings opportunities. But you know, this loan is, is really um, engineered to help utilize income dollars to, to offset the amount of interest people have to pay. To us, you know, what, this, what this loan really answers or solves for is the fact that the amount of interest people pay on their mortgages uh, tends to be more important than the interest rate that comes with their mortgage. And so when we have that discussion with people, it really opens up the opportunity to discuss an alternative in what the all-in-one loan is. So the merging of banking and borrowing into one place helps uh, utilize money more effectively to, to lower the, the mortgage principal faster and, and with it, the, the cost of the loan itself. It's, it's so interesting because we're, you know, in a, in a normal market, basically, you as, as interest rates go up, the housing market slows down. Yeah. As interest rates come down, the housing market speeds up, and that's just because of access to lower rates on the 30-year fixed rate loan. Mm -hmm. And 90% right. of uh, people that have a loan on their home is a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. And really, most people are focused like on their car, uh, same with their house, is they're focused on the payment. And what is my payment going to be on this particular loan? And you talked about paying less interest, uh, on, less interest on that loan. And whether it's a 10% rate or a 3% rate, it doesn't really matter what the payment is. It matters how much interest you're paying. Well, I would I would say that you know the payment always matters. Your monthly obligation towards you know paying paying a debt matters, of course, especially today, where interest rates are, are higher. And interest rates, by the way, are just a reflection of really the cost of living. Everything is higher. You know, food is higher. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just transportation. Everything is is higher in price today. Certainly, mortgage rates and rates on other uh, consumer debt. Um, you know, so obviously what we are uh, obligated to pay on a monthly basis to service our debt it matters to people, especially as their, their cash flow, their discretionary cash flow gets squeezed, uh, if you will. So the payment always matters, but you know, it shouldn't always be just the exclusive focal point. You know, pay, pay down uh, and, and cost savings is, is also something that uh, we find people um, are, are really concerned about. Paying, everybody wants their home's prices or value to go up, but nobody wants to pay more than they have to for their home. Right. Right. And, and ultimately, the, we're so you know, kind of reliant on interest rate cycles being more favorable in order to create these opportunities in housing or savings opportunities. Uh, and if you think about it, it's sort of weird because none of us control, I guess collectively we all participate. And, and somewhat have influence over these rate cycles, but none of us controls them, of course. So, 
you know, why, why do we have to be so dependent on, on interest rates in order to create opportunities for us to save money and reduce the cost of housing? And we don't. What we have to do is change the way money is used, change the way money is applied to the debt itself. Let's just restructure the mortgage. As you said, Mike, you know, traditional lending has been in place since really the 1930s. The traditional 30-year fix, forward amortized loans, put to market in 1938, you know, and they haven't changed since. And opening up credit policy and you know accepting lower credit scores or higher loan to values, that's not innovation. That's just <laughs> right. right, that's just kind of contracting or expanding with, with market conditions for, for production value. Uh, you know, but changing the way a mortgage instrument you know, utilizes money and, and applies it to principal versus interest is really what we're talking about here. And that's what the all in one changes. That's why it's so powerful. It's the only principal paid first, to my knowledge today, it's the only principal paid first mortgage product in America. So conceptually, you can already begin to understand how that is better for people, how it offsets even higher interest rates. The question is, can you save money in time even while interest rates are higher? Yes, a 10% a interest rate mortgage uh, designed to pay off in six or seven years is significantly less expensive than a two and a half percent mortgage as an example that's designed to pay off in 30. You know, the math doesn't lie, the terms are really what it comes down to and how, how money applied to the debt changes the terms. So, is, so with this loan, it, you said principal first mortgage. Um, I'm, we're going to get into detail a, bit, a little bit later, but that kind of scares me. Principal first, just, I, it's like, I don't want to do a 15-year or a 10-year uh, fully amortized loan because that my, my money goes into that mortgage and it's gone and my payment actually goes up as well. So, like, the... the, the the interest for principal first scares me a little bit. Well, you know, it, it, you know, it's statistically very few people actually you know, prepay down a mortgage. Of course, we all can do that. There's no secret here. Uh, paying more towards principal, more aggressively, you know, ahead of schedule will save time and money. People are reluctant to do that because mortgage instruments are, are illiquid. Right, and most, most financial instruments we use, by the way, are liquid to some degree. I mean, you can access funds that you have been uh, applying towards a 401k account, as an example. Um, most things that we apply or commit to um, large sums of money towards uh, have some liquidity to them, uh, except for the mortgage. In order to access your payment money back out, you would have to refinance or you would have to go get maybe a second <coughs> lien on your home. Um, and, and certainly the incentive built into traditional mortgage products is to pay the least amount on a monthly basis. So we're sort of disincentivized, if you think about it, because they're illiquid products to pay anything extra on a monthly basis, even though we know it'll save us some time and money. Yeah. And we solved that with the all in loan. It's open-ended, not closed-ended. And what that means is you can put money into an all in loan and take money right back out of an all in loan when needed, now, whether that's the same day or tomorrow. Uh, it, it keeps money liquid for use, which builds, right, foundationally, begins to build the incentive to, to take greater control of what you owe and um, have much greater influence over how much you're being charged in cost. So some people, it, it, it's, it's this loan is different for everybody, right? Yeah. I mean, it, 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 depending on how much money you put towards the all-in-one loan or how much money goes through your checking account, and we'll explain that again in a little bit here, but it's, it, I, if somebody were to ask me, well, I, I wanna save $100,000, well, it's really up to you on how you That's right. manage this loan program. And uh, it's, it's very flexible in that way. Uh, whereas on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage, like Dave said, you put your money in, it's a one-way street. It goes, it pays down your principal. You will not see that loan, uh, that money again until you sell or refinance or get a second mortgage. And so that's super important to understand about this product is, is that you can still have access to this money and you're gonna build equity a lot faster by paying down the, the loan a lot faster. I mean, they, think about it, it's, it's great. You, you mentioned as well, you know, really the, the sheer you know, statistically, how how many homeowners, how many mortgage borrowers, you know, utilize just the standard thirty-year mortgage product? And of course, you know, the, the, our belief, as you know, Mike, is is not that the thirty-year mortgage or a fifteen-year mortgage doesn't have its place. Again, these are products that are developed for a a, a you know community of of homebuyers and homeowners who 
ultimately really need that stable payment plan. Uh, yeah. You know, that's the upside of it. There's a predictable payment structure, uh, and you know, they're. It's sort of a commodity item. They're doesn't take month a whole in, lot of Month in, month out, they know what that payment is going to be. That's it. You know, and, and again, uh, very for for people that are sort of becoming newly established in their financial behavior and their budget, uh, maybe don't have a whole lot of discretionary money at the end of uh, at the end of the month. That's a it's a very valuable um, way to finance real estate and get started. Then there's this whole other subset of, of folks, probably tens of millions in our estimate of uh, homeowners and prospective home buyers who, who are well established. The, the average age home buyer in the United States in 2022 is 47 years old. Average age mortgage borrower in the United States is 55 years old. Those most active in real estate are people who aren't newly establishing their behavior, yeah. but are actually well on their way. Yeah. And you know the, the conventional products, um, you know, as a payment plan goes, sort of become a ball, a ball and chain. And, and we and our belief is that that we should be developing sort of a battle axe, a tool for to help people, you know, have an easier time navigating, paying less when that makes sense, leveraging when that makes sense, um, reinvesting in real estate when that makes sense, and paying off as fast as they they want to, tailoring the results relative to the, how they want to use it and what they need to accomplish throughout their life. I mean, that's that's the one of the biggest benefits of the product. That's awesome. That's inc it's, inc it's an incredible product. I love it. I love selling this product to, to as many people as I can. I'm going to tell everybody that I know about this product and uh, uh, some of them are going to like it. Some of them are not going to like it, but it is a very great product for uh, a lot of people. And we're trying to tell more people about it. So, so let's get let's switch gears a little bit here and go into the details of the loan. So we've kind of hit the high level and kind of some, you know, ten thousand foot uh, mm -hmm. uh, things about the loan program. Now let's get into the detail about it. It's a, it's a very easy concept, but it takes a little bit to understand this. So can you go into detail on? You talked about the mortgage and a checking account mm -hmm. going together all in one uh, loan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that is that is it, right? So tell me, like, go into detail on how it works. Yeah. Well, let's start with a checking account for, for just a moment. Uh, why a checking account? Why does this make sense? Well, let's just start with the, the fact that y most Americans who can certainly qualify for uh, a mortgage utilize one of them, right? They, most Americans have at least one checking account. We tend to drive our income, right? It's the, it tends to be the initial landing place for our earnings. Yeah. Um, what people don't, I think, realize is the, the sheer volume or the amount of money, the sum of money that actually flows through their checking accounts over time in even a short period of time. Most Americans will, will earn uh, more money and manage more money through their checking account, and call it in just five years, than the amount they will owe on their house and a mortgage. That's so, incredible. yeah, the problem isn't that they don't have the resources it takes to actually reduce their debt and the cost in their life more, more efficiently. The, the issue is that where we manage those funds is isolated, sort of on its own little private you know, desert island. We, we earn money, we deposit it into a check-in account. That check-in account is a separate financial product than our debts. And of course, you know that we pay typically a lot higher interest rates and a lot more interest over time on our debts, our liabilities, than we actually get paid in return uh, for our use and loyalty to our check-in account providers. So beginning with the check-in account, there's a lot of money that transfers through uh, these tools on a, on a weekly, monthly basis. And that money otherwise you know, goes underappreciated, it's undervalued because it's not really being utilized by us consumers, us depositors. We begin to fix that by merging the checking account with the mortgage. Let's consider the mortgage for a moment. Mortgages uh, will, will, as you say, um, you know, front load the payments with, with interest costs. Um, about 90 to 94 percent of Americans utilize a, a gold standard 30-year 30 30-year 30 uh, term mortgage, and, and a lot of Americans will actually buy, you know, s upwards of 60, 90 years worth of uh, mortgage term in just the course of 10 years. Of course, because they chase interest rates to to generate right. some savings opportunities, and and again, uh, people just continue to kind of stay stuck in that rut and that front-loaded side of the mortgage S instrument, right? Uh, so, what's the what's the typical length of time somebody holds a 30-year fixed rate mortgage? Historically, about five years five years about I've five told years. people seven years so five yeah. years and yeah. then they started over again yeah and we'll probably see that you know continue to accelerate you know given given the ID 
idea that you know we all know that at one point rates will be will, will go down from here and you know what we're going to see is you know people that finance their real estate in the past you know call it 18 to 24 months are likely going to run off those those balance sheets and, re, and refinance right, again right. and restart that clock all over again what if you didn't have to restart a clock what if your rate reduced with the market, right, uh, automatically. What yeah. if it was built into the product? Um, so the all-in-one loan uh, takes the checking account, the power of a checking account, and the power of the income that flows through a checking account, and we add a feature onto an all-in-one loan checking account. That added feature is called Sweep Banking. Sweep, S-W-E-E-P. What that means is it transfers deposits automatically to the mortgage the day of a deposit. So if I deposited five dollars into my all-in-one loan checking account, that five dollars is not going to remain there doing nothing for me until I need it tomorrow or next week. It's going to sweep to my mortgage balance and pay it down by five dollars. Go further than that. If I took what I would normally commit towards a regular mortgage payment, call it three thousand dollars. If I deposited three thousand dollars into my all-in-one loan checking account, all three thousand of that sweeps today and pays down my mortgage balance by three thousand dollars yeah and that's a huge benefit now go even further i take my entire paycheck uh and i deposit that the day i earn it or rental income right that i earn off yeah. a rental property tax refund if anybody gets those anymore <laughs> whatever it right. may be any receivables coming in on a routine basis over the year over the course of a year the day that it's deposited into an all-in-one loan checking account sweeps and pays down the mortgage balance by that same amount. That's a benefit because how interest is computed on the all-in-one loan, uh, it, which recomputes daily on whatever the unpaid principal balance is. So you now have the opportunity to lower your balance with yeah. money you've earned um, automatically to, to uh, create a savings. So define recompute daily. So uh, recomputing interest daily means uh, a simple interest calculation. We're taking what is owed on the mortgage balance, the principal at midnight, multiplying that by the interest rate, the loan's interest rate, yeah. and dividing that number by the number of days in the calendar year, 365. And uh, that equals that day's interest cost. Now the customer isn't charged interest daily. It's just recomputing interest daily over the monthly period. What that does is it engineers the lowest possible interest cost on the mortgage for that, that monthly cycle. Because the lower your principal balance is, the less lower. interest you're gonna pay. That's right. We're, we're basically uh, computing interest on a daily basis and summing that total up at the end of the month and that becomes the interest payment. What we've done is we've separated the principal from the interest. Principal is paid by making deposits and leaving money in the, in the account. It already goes towards the mortgage and interest uh, is charged uh, only after the month is ended. Okay, so now, now we're a little scared because you've taken all the money out of my checking account and I don't have any more money in that checking account to pay for my bills. What happens when I have a bill that needs to be paid? Yeah, you pay it right from your mortgage, right from your all-in-one loan. <laughs> and the reason that's possible is because the mortgage side of the all-in-one loan isn't your standard uh, closed-end 30-year mortgage uh, where you can't pull money back out. Instead, it's a first lien position, 30-year draw, home equity line of credit. The only one that I'm aware of in the United States today. 30 yeah. years worth of usage. Put money in, take money out, money in, money out freely. The way money is put into it is by making deposits into the checking account. Yeah. The way you take money back out is by, again, using the, the linked checking account, the all in one loan checking account. So you pay bills like normal. So the checking account, it comes with online banking, it comes with a checkbook, it comes with Bill an pay, ATM card, mobile, everything. Mobile deposits. Mobile, like everything. You, you could write me a check today like you're, <laughs> like you're going to, and I could take a picture right. of that through the all in one app, and my mortgage balance goes down today, right? And I could pay, pay a bill uh, tomorrow, and uh, that money comes you know, drafted right off my, my all in one loan line of credit automatically for me. So then the balance actually goes up, Correct. and you're starting to pay more interest on that just yeah. because it's a higher balance. And this is where some people get caught up, right? Well, gosh, how am I going to save money over time if I'm spending you know, a good sum of that money right back out? I've got bills to pay. And it's a logical um, you know, question. The, the reality is there's a few things going on here. Number one is that the initial impact to principal lowers the, the daily balance in which interest is being computed on nightly. We also know that money tends to be spent out periodically. 
you know, you don't get paid on the first and by the second you're, <laughs> you're completely drained. At least we hope. <laughs> so, you know, if you can qualify for yeah. a, a standard mortgage, you're likely not that, that individual. Yeah, so we know right. that money tends to get spent out towards your weekly expenses and monthly bills, you know, like a cell phone bill yeah. is a one-time monthly expense, yeah. you know, but you know, food, grocery shopping, things like that may be a weekly occurrence, right? Maybe not every single day, but maybe a couple times throughout the week. The point here is that money tends to float in our accounts, right? Waiting to be spent on our living expenses. And while that float occurs, that money is being utilized to keep the daily principal balance of your mortgage lower in which interest is being computed on. So let, let's just define float a little bit more uh, for, for everybody. Yep. So what, what do you mean by float? Time. Um, it's sort of, we refer to it as sort of, uh, you know, lazy money that's awaiting to be spent. You know, most of our income dollars are going to be utilized just to support our, our living, um, our lifestyle, you know, our living habits, utility bills, cell phone bills, you know, food, entertainment, all these things. Again, not spent out out of our accounts all at once. It's done really on a, on a weekly and monthly, even quarterly. Sometimes we have just one. Uh, one one time a year expenses, you know, consider holidays, you know, um, are, are periodic. Um, there's peaks and valleys to our spending, but the truth is we don't spend all of our income out at once. It doesn't all come in at once either. So as money washes in and hits the account, it impacts principal the day it gets there. Money tends to loiter around waiting to be spent for many days, sometimes weeks on end. And while it's waiting to be spent, that's referred to as float. Now yeah. float is very valuable. In today's environment, our traditional environment, it's very valuable to our banks, right? Less valuable to us because we're, again, yielding less interest on our money than we have to pay out on our debts. This changes that, uh, that paradigm automatically where we can effectively save more interest than we could earn with those funds while they remain liquid um, before they're spent. And this is the power of this loan so this is where <laughs> the rubber hits the road right here is that this float money that you're using pays down the balance you pay less interest and i've shown people we have a, a simulator that we can use and i've shown people how they can save hundreds of thousands of dollars in interest and pay off their loan in 10 years 11 years 12 years uh, way sooner than on a 30-year fixed rate mortgage and the critical piece of this is, is that you do not have to s change no. your monthly daily habits of spending if you are uh, uh, cash flow positive, cash flow positive yeah. yeah you you make that you, you have a budget you stick to your budget, you are going to pay down this loan faster just by using that float money. So yeah. it's super important. And one of the things, one of the reasons why it drives down the balance faster automatically uh, is, and this is sort of a light bulb moment for a lot of people that, that come to learn about the product, is that you know, if, if you didn't have to make a mortgage payment, where would that money reside, the money that you would normally budget for a payment, well naturally it would land in your checking account. And in the all-in-one loan checking account, it drives automatically towards principal. It's already there, it's already committed to, to pay down the mortgage balance. And from that point forward, you, the customer doesn't need to commit it to you know, an outside mortgage or a lender or in the form of a traditional payment. We are essentially converting a principal and interest mortgage payment into a 100% principal payment or principal pay down by way of making that deposit. So imagine if I'm somebody who makes, call it $10,000 a month, and I have a budget that allows me or affords me a $3,000 principal and interest payment on a traditional loan, and maybe I spend an additional $6,000 out towards my living expenses, leaving me maybe with about 1,000 or 10% of my, my net income left over, just didn't need to spend it this month ongoingly. Well, in an all-in-one loan environment, that $10,000 drives down my balance. I spend my $6,000 out like I normally do on my living expenses, and guess what? I paid down my mortgage balance by $4,000 that, that month, in one month. And that effect compounds into a lower starting balance during month, uh, in month two, 
and less interest cost during month two. The whole point of the loan is to drive our cost down to zero sooner in our life. Instead of being stuck with a uh, stagnant payment obligation for 30, 40, 50 years. Yeah, compare that to a 30 year fixed rate mortgage. During the first five to 10 years, the amount of principal that you're paying down is very little compared to what we're talking about paying it down four thousand dollars in principal just in that one month so that's right um okay so tell me let, let's go into a little bit further here we the uh, buyer uh accepts this loan that i'm that i'm selling to them this all-in-one loan right and we we uh, find a house we close the loan and tell me what happens you know the day that we close that loan what's different than a regular loan and then how is the checking account set up well i would say uh the, the, the difference in this product versus any other traditional product really begins even prior to closing. Uh, we, as you mentioned earlier, uh, we, we have a, a method to forecast benefit and that's part of the, you know, obviously part of the introduction to the loan yeah. and um, as we take out an application. Uh, even in underwriting, it's a requirement for our underwriters to actually analyze the, the forecasted uh, analysis that, that's driven from our interactive simulator. And that's, that, that's compared to a traditional loan. We want to make sure that this has an um, extraordinary financial benefit for people um, over you know, traditional financing. And when that's, it becomes obvious. And like you said, sometimes, in a lot of cases, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. in interest costs completely avoided um, and a lot of years saved. Um, so that you know that begins to unfold during the during the process uh, in underwriting and uh, and then uh, right before we actually draw documents uh, to to close, uh, we perform what's called a QA call, a quality yeah. assurance phone call. It's a, uh, a, this is performed by our interim servicing department, our client liaison team. Uh, reach out to every single borrower. 100% of our all-in-one loan customers are contacted, and they have a, a conversation that uh, follows a script. And essentially, we want to make sure that each and every single customer has every uh, one of their questions answered at that point. And and we're structuring and closing the loan as as anticipated, as they expect. And uh, and we want to keep people engaged because you can start saving you know right out of the gates with this product. We want to keep them engaged. Right after we close the loan, another communication event occurs where they receive uh, an electronic uh, what to expect and congratulatory message from us. And that helps answer a lot more questions and keeps them engaged. About 30 days, 30 to 45 days after that, uh, a customer will receive their banking features. Uh, the account is completely activated. They'll receive their ATM debit point of sale Visa cards. Uh, and uh, instructions with temporary passwords to log in for the first time and set up their account, uh, their bill pay, all this stuff. Customer service team is also available to, to walk them through it verbally over the phone. It's a real white glove kind of uh, you know, high touch treatment, yeah, treatment to, to make sure that people are off and running in the right direction and remain engaged. And I say that, I repeat that because I think a lot of us can identify with you know, get in a mortgage and man, you're just so relieved after it's done. You right. don't want anything to do with it for a while, yeah, right? Yeah. Well, we want people to continue to be engaged and, and excited and begin using it as soon as it gets activated and they have access to it. That first deposit means they're on their way. They're starting to save. You're building equity in your home more right away, automatically with your own income. Why not get started as soon as you can? So we want to we want to help kind of create that uh, that mindset. Okay, so now the like. A lot of questions that I get around this is, is that, and you kind of referred to it a little bit earlier, which is at midnight, mm -hmm. a lot of things happen, right? right? So checks are coming in, bill pays are coming in, your, you, you know, income's coming in, your mortgage is saying, I need to give the money back to your checking account and pay the bills. What, what happens? It, so it's, it's all automated. It, we like to kind of use the term, set it and forget it. You're making a deposit, uh, the day that hopefully the day that you receive income and, and by the way it's not required to use this as your primary banking engine the customer doesn't have to do that they can still use their their account that they're used to using but this creates an opportunity to, to, to use those those dollars more you know more efficiently so obviously the sooner money impacts or hits the checking account the sooner they can be swept over that day towards mortgage principal reducing what's owed therefore offsetting the cost during that month and, and on uh, forward so at midnight, 
uh, the the sweep occurs. The ledger is uh, um, is detailed, meaning that it'll it'll show the deposit that was received securely into the checking account and that was swept to the mortgage balance. Mortgage balance reduces, and then interest is is computed that that evening right after the sweep occurs as well. So literally, Mike, you're waking up the very next morning. And you can log in online or open up the app and simply see there was my five thousand dollar deposit yesterday, right. credited to my mortgage balance last night. Today, my checking account shows zero. It's a zero balance checking account <laughs> that swept my yeah. money over, kept it, keeps it liquid in the all-in-one loan mortgage security, which is the thirty-year line of credit, and uh, everything's visible. So you can actually see how much money you have available. Um, the credit limit that we've approved the customer um, in underwriting originally. And uh, from there, the use of the money is just like any other normal checking account. You pay a bill, money comes right back out. There's no manual movement of money back and forth. It's all automated. And two statements? Like you have a checking account statement it's, it's and a mortgage? A, it's a consolidated is, statement. It is consolidated, consolidated well. statement. All in one. Yeah, all in one. <laughs> the portal online is... is, uh, is is also integrated, but you can toggle in between the two, really, and see the ledger, right? And that's a lot of regulatory, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, banking, uh, you know, banking kind of rules centered on this. And so, you know, we want our customers obviously to see how the banks are, you know, utilizing how, how our bank partner and servicing is utilizing that money. You see the deposit come into the FDIC insured deposit account, which is a processing account, routing number, account number. You see it remain there until the sweep occurs at the end of the day, and. Uh, and then you can also toggle to the loan side and see how that principal balance was just reduced by the, by the uh, credit from the uh, deposit. So everything's ledgered and visible for people to see on a, on a daily basis and statements are cut at the end of the month on the first actually. And, uh, and, and that's when a customer can see all their activity for the monthly cycle, including their total interest cost for that month. That's their interest payment. And that interest payment, by the way, Mike, is, isn't due until the 21st of the new month. Each following month, the interest isn't due until the 21st. So right. there's more float there. There's more float. That's it's a brilliant. It's a very simple or little detail, but you know it's uh, it it has a large impact. It, yeah. it sounds like nickels and dimes that are being saved, but that leads to hundreds and, and even thousands of dollars that are saved automatically, and that grows. That savings benefit compounds because you're you're literally leaving money in that you have to allocate towards the mortgage expense on the 21st, the interest, yeah. for an additional 20 days of right. float, right, before it's drafted out for you. Yeah. So the, the benefit doesn't, it just doesn't, doesn't end. Yeah, that's, that's great. <laughs> so, okay, so you let, let's switch gears a little bit more. So we've, we've gone through a lot of the details and how the nitty gritty of that, uh, how it works. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the interest piece of it. So. It's a first lien line of credit, 30 years. It's a variable rate loan, it is. right? So it changes every single day or yeah. every single month. Once a month. Once a month, okay. It's tied to the one year CMT. That's right. The Constant maturity treasury, right? right? Why as a borrower, well, ex we've talked about how the interest is calculated on a, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But why would somebody take this loan, a variable rate loan? In fact, I've had a borrower say, you know, is this a variable rate loan? And I said, yes. And he said, I don't want any part of it. Well, why would somebody want this versus the 30-year fixed rate mortgage? Well, I think that's a mistake to have that sort of canned response. Yeah. Uh, I, I understand why we've been sort of conditioned over time. To, <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, and so I understand it. And, uh, but the reality is, you know, loans, like all financial instruments, are just a mathematical equation. Uh, you know, and this equation, um, you know, comprises of three variables that equate into the cost, right? So if we're truly concerned about the cost you have to pay over time, um, as well as the monthly obligation, you should be looking at those three variables and how money is applied to those three variables. The three variables are, of course, the interest rate. The interest rate always matters, but also the, the balance in which the interest rate is being applied and the length of time, time. you're going to carry a balance. Uh, so time and, and balance or principle actually have a very, they play a very large role and have even a greater impact mathematically uh, compared to just the interest rate exclusively. And what people tend to do is, is uh, really sort of gravitate towards a fixed rate mortgage with the lowest rate possible. And 
you know, what the trade-off is, is that that same person is agreeing to remain in debt for longer, right. which means that their balance is going to remain higher than is necessary. Yeah. Okay, in which interest is being computed on. So, and one of the, one of the best ways to measure uh, sort of the, the, the cost of a, of a loan is really to, I think, divide, I, what I do is I divide in the total interest obligation into the principal balance being, um, being borrowed. Uh, and of course, the, the interest cost is relative to the term, to the time, and the interest rate, and the original balance, right? Yeah. So as an example, whether it's $100,000 being borrowed, or a million dollars, or $10 million being borrowed, if, if the repayment plan is uh, gonna last 30 years, and you're borrowing that money at 6%, as an example, and it's a fixed payment, um, that's going to cost that customer 116% uh, relative interest compared to the principal they're borrowing. So in other words, for every one hundred thousand dollars they're borrowing in principal, they're going to be charged one hundred sixteen thousand dollars in interest. Borrow one hundred thousand, pay back two hundred sixteen thousand. Yes, you may have a, a payment that doesn't move, but what you also <laughs> have is a structured interest cost or load on your life that you, that is going to be very hard, very difficult to avoid. And what the all-in-one loan solves for is less about interest rate, but about interest dollars, the, the cost of the, of the borrowed funds. And, and it does that by impacting what's owed and how long you're gonna owe it. Right. The rate structure on the product keeps, uh, it, it keeps our customers' cost aligned with our own cost, which is why we chose this index. Uh, and it makes it much safer uh, for us to lend in any environment, whether rates are low or high. Uh, this is a very safe, reliable, dependable product for us yeah. to put out there. There's a reason why when rates go up, um, credit begins to tighten up, right? Lenders begin to pull back. Well, that's because they probably have a whole lot of fixed rate uh, loans with lower rate levels on their balance sheet and they need to drive you know, what they're losing in value on that side of their portfolio in, in the form of higher. cost, right? higher cost for new loans and and this is the game of the lending industry this is kind of what occurs time and time and time again the all loan is structured to where the interest rate is predictable it is aligned nearly identically historically speaking with the fed funds which is used by the by the federal reserve to set yeah. monetary policy so it's very predictable um, and it remains aligned. Yes, it can move once a month, but it's predictable in nature. But what matters most is what the balance is, how fast is it you know, reducing, yeah. and how long people are in debt. Um, again, the question becomes, can I save money in time even if the rate were to adjust and even if the rate were slightly higher than what I have uh, for a traditional loan? And the answer to that is potentially. Everybody's different. <laughs> right. Everybody's, yeah. different. Yeah. Everybody's different. Yeah. And that's that's the biggest you know benefit of the product. When you when you put it up next to the 30-year fixed and people have the 30-year fixed rate normally for five. Let's say that it's seven years because now the, their rates are so low, right? right? So let's say they had it for seven years. The amount of principal that you paid down on the 30-year fixed, if you made the normal payment versus the all-in-one loan, is a significant it's difference. Dramatic, yeah. yeah. I mean, a standard 30-year loan, you know, you're for every um, $100 spent on a mortgage payment over the first 10 years, um, only about $22, $23 of that is actually going towards principal. The rest is going towards interest costs. So, you know, I also look at this from just a practical standpoint, a regular human being, how, how is my money being used? Is it really going to benefit me more today than other people? Um, and and the, you know, the reality is, no, with traditional loans, it doesn't. It really kind of feeds the, the, you know, the, the, the lender. It's a short-term mentality for the borrower. That's right, versus sort of an investment in that real estate. It's supposed to be an investment, right? Yeah. And one of the ways you can best utilize your money is to, you know, to, to attack principal, attack the, the amount of time, reduce those things more aggressively. But the all-in-one loan does those things without forcing a budgetary change. There's yeah. no lifestyle, you know, change requirement. We're just we're just bolting on where money flows through, which is a checking account with the mortgage commitment, which is statistically the biggest you know expense that we commit ourselves to in life. Um, to help people just get out from underneath it, um, have an easier time doing that. By the way, you're, you're building equity in a property. That's what you're doing. By paying down principal, using an all-in-one loan, you're actually developing equity in that home more aggressively without relying on home appreciation, which isn't material, right? It's not material until you sell your house. That's right, right? you have to liquidate. You have to yeah. sell your home yeah. or, or go get another HELOC yeah. um, you know, to, to actually have access. The all-in-one loan keeps those dollars 
uh, liquid and available, available. for use 24 seven over the 30 year term. So, you know, it, 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 it really kind of solves for the mortgage. One thing I like to say is that, you know, it's not just a mortgage, it's really a solution to the mortgage itself. It's healthy for both bank and borrower uh, because it reduces risk um, and deleverages the debt load and cost. So let's, you said something there that it's it's beneficial to the bank. Why would, you know, basically a bank, we're using our own money to pay down our mortgage rather than the bank using our money to go fund somebody else's car loan or credit That's card right. or what have you. Um, but why would a bank want to actually have and lend using this all in one product? Yeah, yeah we get we get that question, you know, commonly as you as you know. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, and, and it, again, I don't disagree with the, the skepticism. You know, we're not really known. The mortgage industry is really not known for innovation and pioneering right. things yeah. that put the cu the customer or the consumer out front. Uh, this this truly is and does. Uh, the The reality is, is that. Um, by paying down what's owed on, on a home uh, in terms of the mortgage balance, it actually uh, reduces risk, right? For the reduces bank. risk for the bank, it also reduces risk for that, for that customer. Yeah. Beyond that, um, keeping that money liquid allows that individual to navigate. Because we know life, if there's one thing certain about life, it's that it, there's a lot of uncertainty yeah. about life. And uh, you know, there's curveballs that people are, are uh, thrown you know, uh, on a yearly basis that they probably didn't foresee, they, they couldn't have predicted. Uh, and because the all in one loan is a 30 year open end mortgage, it keeps those dollars liquid. It allows a lot of, na uh, I guess, maneuverability for people, a lot of optionality uh, and, and navigating, you know, challenging times, but also maximizing, you know, and, and executing on some of the some of the opportunities out there to grow wealth and, yeah. and security. Uh, this, this reduces the risk uh, for us of delinquency or default because of those two factors. Another thing is, is that it also creates a sticky relationship for us. Uh, you know, helping people get into a mortgage that uh, ultimately allows them or provides an easier way for them to get rid of the debt as fast as they want to or possibly can. Uh, means that we're likely not going to lose that customer right. to a refinance or another loan. And as you pointed out earlier, you know, the, the average lifespan for, for a loan is about five to seven years, historically speaking. So if we made somebody a 30 year fixed, you know, we are likely going to lose that person within five years because rate reduction or some other need. Right. Maybe they need access to equity money and they find a reason to do a cash out refinance using, you know, another 30 year yeah. loan. Uh, we don't lose customers to those, uh, you know, to those reasons on on an all-in-one loan because it's already built in. You have those. It's accessible. Know, the money is that there. access. It's already there. So, yeah. so and it's the also, rates are coming down. That's right. It's a reliable product yeah. that reduces risk yeah. for us, um, and uh, just creates an, a, a sticky relationship. It's a very very flexible loan. Um, it, would you consider this an interest-only loan? Great question. Um, I would say that the minimum payment obligation on it, you know, technically is interest only. You, you literally don't have to put money into it, and, and just if you're maxed out on the all-in-one loan line of credit. In other words, if you if your balance is equal to what we've approved for the credit limit, um, you know, the only deposit necessary to reduce the principal would be just the amount owed in interest, interest. each month, right? To, yeah. Because the interest payments are drafted off the line on the 21st of each new month, so you have to have enough credit in there for that draft to occur and not be, not go not risk delinquency. Okay. So technically, you could treat this as an interest only loan, um, but I really refer to it uh, as a principal paid first mortgage. Yep. Yeah. You know, that's really what it does. You you put money towards it, regardless of the amount or the frequency or the day, the calendar day, uh, and 100% of that money goes directly to, towards loan principal in order to reduce the interest cost that month. And so. Yeah, there's really two ways to kind of look at it. You can use it as interest only, but really ultimately it's intended for to help people yeah. reduce what they owe by paying principal first. So just for an example, so that I can kind of, we can show this on the screen here, is that if I used my American Express card for all my purchases, I went and bought groceries, paid my utility bills, everything. Let's just say I used it for everything. Is that a good idea to use that and then 
That way the money is, your balance is lower for a longer period of time. And at the end of the month, you write uh, the payment out of your all-in-one loan to pay off your American yeah, Express. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're already getting a reward, right, for using the credit card, <laughs> right, yeah. right? So this just kicks that reward up another level, I believe. Uh, and a lot of people do that. Although we don't advocate to go out and start spending right, you know, your than, money on yeah. a credit card. But if somebody is already doing that, and I would argue that a lot of Americans, probably most Americans are utilizing some form yeah. of credit to, to, to pick up some gain, some benefit, some reward. Um, so utilizing that strategy, uh, you know, certainly helps keep money floating in your all-in-one loan against mortgage principal for longer. You know, that could be an extra 30 days of float yeah. before you have to pay that bill. Yeah. And so it just, it just continues to accelerate the, the benefit, of it. compound the savings. Nice. Okay. All right. So that's a lot about interest. That's a lot about just paying off your house faster, paying less interest. Uh, it is it is such an amazing loan. It's almost so much that it's, it's almost too good to be true, mm -hmm. but it is a mathematical uh, equation That's it. that you use to actually pay less interest. So it's, it's a great loan. Let's switch gears a little bit further here and let's talk to the real estate agents that are out there. What, you know, when they're out talking to a client about selling a house um, or selling their house uh, for them, mm -hmm. why is this such a good loan program? Even in today's market with, you know, really high interest rates, people have a three or a four percent mortgage on their house right now. They don't want to move because they don't want to have that, uh, that they don't want to get a higher interest rate and pay right. more interest. So what, what would they be telling these uh, sellers out there to sell their house? Yeah, it's great point and you hit the nail on the head I, I think uh, I think that's I, I would I would say that that a, a lot of these same folks that may not be executing on what they would like to do it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have other goals right I, I would argue that a lot of people are having conversations at home about you know buying buying a bigger home or buying to a better neighborhood or you know um, you know maybe buying a, a, a second home where they would love to vacation or an investment yeah. property those conversations are, are had at home and new and job job transfer job, all these yeah, reasons all to, to, to be mobile you know people want that mobility and you know by and large a lot of our housing market that is uh, that are currently homeowners uh, do speak about that and they're having those conversations and they and they have those goals be able to execute on those goals is a different story of course and I, I don't know that r real estate agents um, or us you know in, in the lending industry you know get those phone calls I don't think that phone calls are made to us saying hey we've been talking about you know potentially buying up we you know um, you know our family's growing we need to do this or hey they rezoned the schools and uh, we're not we're on the area that we want to be in the high school we wanted our kids to go to all these different reasons why people consider moving um, we don't necessarily get those conversations or those phone calls you know to to, be, to engage our, our our clients our mutual clients to help them figure out if that's even possible and I think that's because a lot of people that are in their current mortgages with low rates and sort of the one way, you know, forward amortizing products yeah. don't believe it's possible. And I don't blame them. You know, we all, we all sort of act and function and make decisions based on what we know. We don't know what we don't know. Yeah. And I think it's important for, for us, you know, uh, here at CMG Home Loans, as well as our referral um, partners, our real estate uh, agent partners, to, to talk to customers about the opportunity that the all in one loan provides, that mobility factor. What if you could buy again sooner in your life? What if you had the option to do that because of the mortgage? Because the mortgage keeps your money liquid. You can gain 24 seven access to your home's equity money. You could reduce what you owe. So if you did choose to sell your home in the next six months, you could probably do that with a lower balance. Even if you chose to maybe convert that into an investment property, uh, you could have your cash flow off the, off the investment uh, property to, to pay down your balance. The optionality of the all-in-one loan actually opens doors, I, I think, to, to all these extraordinary opportunities uh, for people to be more active in real estate. I mean, frankly put, if people had more money available, they would probably be more active in real estate. Yeah, yeah. And th this loan is engineered to help people avoid the cost. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right? So And I, realize more homeownership dreams that, that 
That's and right. Investment homes and so forth. That's right. So I think real estate agents play a big uh, a big role in helping to you know spread the news. And I also believe that real estate agents are, are really kind of at the, the, the tip of the spear. Um, they're ultimately having to create new relationships and and uh, and you know develop out you know the pathways to to home ownership and and helping people realize those goals. But it's also very hard to create those new relationships, and I, I think that they come by way of creating new conversations. Well, let's let, let's talk just a little bit more about uh, the referral aspect of this of this product. Like, I think people talk about this loan, and yep. if they talk about this loan, and they're talking to their friends about this loan, and they're saying, "Oh, I used uh, Susie uh, to to help me buy this house, and this all-in-one loan is an amazing loan, and we got it from Mike at CMG Home Loans." You know, they they keep on talking about. It. So the referral aspect of this just yeah. keeps on going it's, further and further. It's extraordinary, and people are uh, grat you know they're just they're. they're gratified with with how it performs uh, we, we hear from people all the time talking about goodness I, I had 22 years left on a, on a on a mortgage and we were sort of locked in didn't really know how we were going to retire or even if that was possible uh, fast forward 18 months later they're they're debt free on that property they still have the all-in-one loan line of credit in place and they're now executing on buying a vacation property up in Lake Tahoe yeah I mean this is these are the types of you know this is the type of kind of response that we we get routinely from customers and guess what they talk to people they have friends like-minded yeah. people tend to gravitate towards each yeah. other and uh, you know and, and it just leads to you know additional you know veins of opportunity is the way I put it with with uh, helping other people you know buy again sooner uh, buy buy a second or, or third property uh, reinvest in the, in the yeah. home they already have yeah <laughs> you know and just frankly put people in a better financial position yeah uh, and people talk about that the um, affordability on this this loan as well. There's a couple of features that I would like you to kind of just touch on a little bit that are a little bit different than you might find in a regular conventional loan. Uh, one of them is the asset depletion. Mm -hmm. So go into kind of how that might help somebody qualify for this loan. So asset depletion is a uh, refers to a method. Uh, in underwriting to help somebody qualify who who has been um, you know a good saver they have mm -hmm. assets that doesn't necessarily mean cash in a, in a savings account it, it, it means retirement um, funds uh, and and other types of uh, uh, assets that that have been out you know um, uh, gathered over time right. well <clears throat> uh, for for that individual that's done a good job of, of allocating or, or um, gathering assets and 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 uh, money retirement funds etc we we look at that individual as somebody that should be able to uh, qualify for for this product because it's really cash flow driven the benefits are really from the the flow of cash right and and the proper management of that of that money and uh and so with asset depletion uh the method that we use is to take um, either 100% of those funds or a percentage of those funds, just depending on what type of fund it is, and right. and, and also the age of the of the borrower, and we deplete that amount by 120 months. So, in other words, the methodology is: what if this customer had to live off those funds only only for 10 years? What would that dollar amount be on a monthly basis in terms of income? And that that helps us ratio um, that individual or help them qualify into the loan. We're Otherwise, they might be self-employed. Yeah, they might be a, a W-2 wage earner um, who really doesn't have to work very hard and have to earn because maybe they've got a trust fund. Right. There's other, you know, there's a so variety of different reasons to supplements. Right. So we're taking a look at this and saying this is a strong customer, great credit history. They just don't necessarily document a whole lot of income on their returns. Um, or even their W-2s, but they have a lot of assets. Maybe uh, that's a we can use our asset depletion feature yeah. to help that person qualify. In most cases, it's awesome because um, when we do that, and if we don't, in the cases where we don't need any of the uh, actual taxable income to qualify, we don't even ask for those returns. No tax returns, yeah, it makes nothing. It, right? makes it really, really easy <laughs> to that. underwrite. It's awesome. As a loan officer, that's uh, great. We don't have to ask for tax returns. We're in good business. Yeah. So tell me about uh, the delayed financing. So this is for maybe cash buyers that want to you know, put a strong offer, cash uh, uh, purchase on the yeah. of, a, of a house. Yeah. How does the delayed financing work? So delayed financing, you know, in today's environment, especially this is... Uh, this is a great feature because uh, you know a lot of lenders 
uh, have tightened up their guidelines and really um, now require extensive seasoning um, on on uh, on properties to be on title before cash can actually be accessed. Equity yep. in a property can be accessed, and we we've not followed suit with this product. Um, it's it's again it's for a community of of homeowners and home buyers that otherwise are well established with their financial behavior and their budget. And they've done a good job saving. They've got financial discipline, right. um, and and we believe that same individual shouldn't have to wait to uh, tap into their, their home's equity money uh, after a cash purchase. So their delayed financing refers to the, the fact that we can actually take an application the day after that cash purchase closes yeah. and structure a, a refinance, a cash out refinance uh, without any seasoning. So the day after, no seasoning requirement and that helps customers recoup a big portion of that investment into that in that real estate all the way up to 80 percent of the value yeah. or the purchase price of that home they just purchased um, uh, up to two million so Incredible. Uh, yeah it's an it's an extraordinary opportunity for those cash buyers to yeah. recoup that cash redeploy it buy again go put it back in the market wherever it was and now there's this structured instrument right in place that is makes it much more I guess easier to yeah. repay and, and avoid costs while also creating liquidity. Accessible, yeah. leverage, I mean pay it down, pay it, you know, use mobility, it, optionality. mobility, optionality. It's yeah. amazing. The the you know, in fact I would say that somebody that owns their house free and clear, they should be at least looking at this product uh, as, for a loan yeah. as well. Just to have the, the accessible money available to them. That's right. I mean I, I, again I think it's the, the high level of optionality that people have. You know, pay down, pay off was I think our original vision for the product, right? And again, as we started, that's what we went to market with. Along the way, you know, we've learned that paying off your debt doesn't always make sense. It may not make sense for a lot right. of people. Yeah. And in some cases, people are on such a, a rapid pace of, of uh, mortgage payoff that that they can they can just pull a lever and say, why don't I just start putting extra funds towards you know investing you know into the market or yeah. other things and slow down my payoff. Maybe eight years, I don't need to pay off in eight years because I'm 42 years old. Maybe it's okay to pay this thing off by the time I'm 55. Right. Right. And, yeah. and you can maneuver that way and and reallocate money however you need. Uh, so for those those uh, cash buyers or for those um, people that have mortgages today, it just it creates that maneuverability factor. And I think that's that's invaluable. It's hard to place a value on that because again what you set as goals today we know is going to probably change next yeah, year yeah and being able to do that and have this credit facility that's backing you supporting you is, is pretty yeah. pretty special and for the real estate agents uh, especially this ha their buyers having this loan like dave said is like it, it's it's the optionality of this gives them more options sooner to buy more real estate. And so this gives the real estate agent another option to help that buyer buy another piece of real estate. That's right. So let's switch gears a little bit to investors. Mm -hmm. So you talked about uh, at the beginning of our conversation, just that it's, you can use it for uh, investment homes, you can use it for second homes. Let's really focus in on the investors and why why is this such a great loan for investors? Yeah, I, I think real estate investors having been one uh, in my life uh, really sort of are focused on two you know, primary objectives. One being that they'd like to grow their positive cash flow position in a, in a property. Mm -hmm. I, I, I speak to people who are hovering at neutral, sometimes even negative, yeah. you know, and, uh, and you know, really the only options traditionally that people can, you know, real estate investors, can uh, can utilize uh, to to grow their position their, and, and create greater positive cash flow out of their real estate investments is to one refinance to a lower rate to reduce their monthly right. payment and well, start gosh, the process all over start again. the process all over again but yeah. again that's not always feasible because none of us controls interest rate cycles right so you know especially right now while rates are higher relatively speaking you're not really creating much uh, opportunity by by offering a refinance to that real estate investor who's looking to to yeah. grow their, their positive cash flow position. The only other way that they could maybe uh, achieve that traditionally is by increasing their rental income. Yeah. Again, that's also something that's challenging. It's not always possible or feasible. You might you might scare away a, a, a loyal tenant, might price yourself out you know, with short-term rentals. Yeah. You know, that's a delicate dance as well. The all-in-one loan solves this because you don't have to do either. 
It's going to reduce the monthly interest payment obligation ongoingly just by flowing cash flow in right. and out. Imagine taking your rental income the day it's received and depositing that directly into your all-in-one loan that is secured by the, by the uh, investment property. And the mortgage balance drops by the rental income right. in total. <laughs> yeah. not, not just a little bit, but all of it. And that begins to offset and compound the savings where the interest payment obligation reduces pretty aggressively month over month over month. And that grows your positive cash flow position automatically, yeah. right? Um, you're creating greater separation between what you're receiving versus what you have to pay out. And that's a good spot to be. The, the, better, the better we can, the, the greater that is for somebody, the, the, the better they are off, I guess. And the other thing is that I think real estate investors are looking for liquidity, right? They want to be able to execute on that next purchase or even repair or renovate. Right, let without me, having to tap into, you know, yeah, yeah. maybe business funds, etc. Let, let me tell you, just one of my friends, I had a conversation with him the other day. He's got three rental properties, three 30-year fixed rate mortgages that I just refinanced for him two years ago, three years ago. And uh, he's got $100,000 sitting in an account over here just for repairs or yeah. making sure. Operating. The, the, yeah, yeah. Well, making the, that's his, his slush fund for these investment properties. And he said, why don't you take one of those investment properties, turn it to the all-in-one loan, which is a 3% mortgage, and pay down by $100,000. You still have access to that $100,000. You're going to pay way less interest, yeah. even though you have a 3% mortgage. Well, the effective rate of interest is, is the better measure, right? Compared yeah. to that 3% percent mortgage he's getting rid of we're now reducing the total interest cost which means that the effective rate of interest I'm guessing is probably equal or lower than that three percent over time yeah, right so you're picking up that benefit plus those dollars are uh, more effectively being utilized right yeah. not sitting idle earning low interest right. versus paying yeah. higher interest yeah and I also believe that that's uh, it's creating liquidity right there's a liquidity value there that uh, that makes it easier to tap into and go buy again um, with those funds while those funds are being used to, to also help save yeah uh, so yeah it's a it's a it's a very um, it creates opportunity for real estate investors it makes it easier to buy and save and grow positive cash flow uh, in in the property zoned all right so let's go one more step further here um, I've got a financial planner a somebody who manages my money um, why would they like or dislike the all-in-one loan? Yeah, I, I can't think of any reason that they would dislike the all-in-one loan, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, you know, from... You know, from the from a fiduciary standpoint, uh, um, you know, this loan really speaks to the holistic planner primarily, the the individual who is tasked to uh, pay attention to every cornerstone uh, of you know our our personal finances and developing wealth and, and financial independence and, and long term security. I'm talking about insurance planning. I'm talking about you know just plain financial literacy. You know that, yeah. that uh, you know that's an entire industry out there. Um, I'm talking about trust services, um, you know, wealth accumulation and management, of course, but also liability management, making you know, helping people cut expense out of their life. It's a very hard thing to do, and in most cases, uh, it's hard to make a large impact by just kind of changing some some of the minor expenses that that are reoccurring in your life. Um, we, we make the joke that just because you're maybe changing your, your cell phone carrier from, <laughs> right. from this to that, you may save 15 or 20 bucks a month. You're not necessarily getting your retirement goals right back on track. You know, but a holistic planner approaches it you know, more globally, broadly, and, and the mortgage uh, tends to be the biggest. Biggest impact that you're yep. gonna have. It impacts uh, their, their personal well-being uh, more so than any other you know, obligation or, or singular expense. And so you know, reducing the amount of interest people have to pay on that debt, on that debt obligation has a very meaning, meaningful impact. Yeah. Frankly put, it just means that people are left with more of their own resources to, you know, to fund other financial needs with. Sooner rather than, Sooner later. than later. I yeah. mean, look at look at um, you know retirement security or uh, retirement income. There's a deficit, of course, that's growing in the United States. It's it's massive. By all accounts, working households about half of all working pre-retirement age working households are not on track to pay for their current living standards yeah. during their retirement years, and they they don't have long to to figure it out. Well, the mortgage is one of those things that they may have a low rate today, but it's still standing in their way. I would say paying for their college tuition costs for children is also one of those obligations that people haven't really thought through much, yeah. right, and have figured out. 
what if you could supplement the cost for you know tuition because you've saved so much in interest costs on your home loan. Yeah. You know, this this leads to other opportunity and for that that holistic planner, that financial advisor that's really looking at, you know, all those areas, the all in one loan is a solution. It's a, it's a massive solution to an enormous problem that is continuing to to get bigger for people. Yeah, I I think, you know, relying on social security income uh, as we get older there, there's less of it that's probably going to be available for us so having your house paid off sooner and being able to save more money uh, sooner is super important for uh, you as you um, kind of plan out your life here and having that 30-year mortgage and having the short-term thought process of a lower interest rate to have a lower payment uh, and to refinance your mortgage every five to seven years is not going to get you there. You're going to stay in debt longer and pay more interest. So rather than getting a 30 year fixed once, you get it three, four, five times throughout your life and you're in debt forever on that loan. It's, it, it has been a good loan for a long time, but the all-in-one loan is a, a way different look at your financial position and uh, being able to have uh, financial independence sooner rather than later is where we want you to get with this all-in-one loan. I mean, goodness, everything else around us is innovated. Yeah, that's I mean, right. You can, exactly. interact, you can interact with your home yeah. through your doorbell. You <laughs> yeah, can, the lights come on when you, you drive turn, up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can turn on the oven from a mile away. Right. You know, right through the mobile app. I mean, uh, goodness, it, it's, it's just certainly time. You know, and again, we've had the loan out for 18 years, but there's just less awareness about it still. It's not a mainstream product because uh, it takes education. Yes. And, you know, forums like this are critical to, to uh, helping people understand the, the uh sort of the, the issue and also the opportunity that exists by thinking differently and, and being introduced to a product like this. Uh, and it's, it is certainly a form of innovation. I, I, I like to kind of make the, the joke that it's not a revolution, it's sort of an evolution, a necessary evolution yeah. in home financing. It's, it creates affordability without a dependency on interest rate cycles always being favorably lower, period. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Dave, thanks for coming on. Thank I appreciate it and driving up here to, to do this with me. Uh, this is uh, Mortgage Wise with Mike Wise. And today we talked about the all-in-one loan. Uh, you can follow me on YouTube or Instagram and uh, you can see more of the videos on other programs and other things that we offer as well. So thanks for being with us today. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call.